everyone. I'm so excited about this book. It's called The Summer Folk, written and illustrated by Doris Byrne. I've wanted this book for so long, but it's out of print, so it's not easy to find. But I found someone who sent it to me in the mail. The Summer Folk. You might recognize Doris Byrne's illustrations because we read, oops, other books by Doris Byrne. The Summer Folk, written and illustrated by Doris Byrne. To the children of the island, both young and old. <clears throat> this book was written in 1968. Willie Potts' house was on a sand dune. In back of the house was a swamp, but in front the sand led all the way down to the sea. Although the house was a little more than a shanty, Willie and his dad, Joe Potts, lived there both for winter and summer for Joe Potts was a fisherman. All winter long, life seemed to go along nice and steady for Willie and Joe Potts. But all summer long, well, that was another kettle of fish. Every summer, strange people came from the city for a holiday beside the sea. These strangers were called summer folk. And if there was one thing on which Willie and Joe Potts agreed, it was that they didn't have any use for summer folk. The summer folk set up big umbrellas on the beach. They dropped peanut butter sandwiches in the sand and all in all did an unnecessary amount of hooting and hollering. Worse yet, they raced about in fancy boats that went very fast and went scree. Thick as sand fleas and twice as pesky, muttered Joe Potts. Summer folk, grumbled Willie. <coughs> Joe Potts had a boat that was neither fast nor fancy, and it went pop, 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 pop. When the summer folks set up their umbrellas on the beach and began to drop their peanut butter sandwiches, sand fleas, Joe Pot would mutter, and off he would go to fish for cod in his boat. Willie had a boat too. One day he had found it sitting on the bottom of the bay under three feet of water. Willie allowed that it was a running, Willie allowed that it was in a rundown condition, and he did his best to patch it up. He mended it with boards and scraps, nails and paint, tar and caulking cotton. But in spite of all of his efforts, there was no overlooking the truth. Willie's boat leaked like a sieve. The only safe place to use his boat was in the swamp where the water was never deeper than Willie's waist. So when the summer folks set up their umbrellas and began unnecessary hooting and hollering, summer folk, Willie would grumble, and off he would go to the swamp. The swamp was bushy, muddy, and shallow. It was choked with wild rose bushes and tulle grass, and had only a few patches of what could be called open water. Taint fit for boating, Willie would mutter. Still, he would bail his boat and catch pollywogs in a jar. Then he would bail his boat and catch dragonflies for a while. But most of the time, he would lie back in his boat, stare at the sky, and get his head nice and empty, which is the way Willie liked it best. One summer, on the longest day of the year, Willie was in his boat as usual. His head was just beginning to feel pleasantly empty when the back of his neck began to prickle. And everyone knows when the back of your neck prickles, it means someone is watching you. So Willie raised his head and peered over the gunnel. Sure enough, it was someone. Summer folk, Will grunted Willie to himself. It was a strange breed of summer folk to Willie, but he didn't let on. Lovely day, said the summer folk. My rain, said Willie. Beautiful lake, said the summer folk. Swamp, said Willie. Fine boat, said the summer folk. Leaks, said Willie. Let's take a water trip. I love water trips, said the summer folk. Won't hold two, said Willie. Then we can take my boat 
and we'll make up a flotilla, which is fun, if not more so, said the summer folk. Would you like to see my boat? Don't mind, said Willie. The summer folk explained that his name was Federley, which was a new kind of name to Willie. Willie followed Federley through the tool grass on a path that was cool and squishy to the toes. Finally, Federley parted the reeds. There was his boat. It had a crow's nest and running lights and other fancy riggings and fittings. Willie had never seen a boat anything like this before, but he didn't let on. Might tend to yawn following the sea, said Willie. Tia pulled away from the tools into the open water with Federley doing most of the work, but not all of it. Oh, sorry, if not all of it. But he didn't seem to mind. He scrambled to the crow's nest, took a reading from his compass, and set a course for north-northeast. First port of call be rosebuds, Federley announced. It's mid-morning and time for brunch, which comes halfway between breakfast and lunch. Rosebud is a great little brunch fixer after she gets used to you. Have you ever been to Rosebud, Stanley Wayne? Stately Wayne? Never heard of the place, said Willie. Rosebud seemed shy and hung back when they arrived. More summer folk, grumbled Willie to himself. Rosebud's stately wane was like no house that Willie had ever dreamed of before, but he kept a straight face and didn't let on. Briars is hard to keep down, said Willie. Soon Rosebud got used to them and began to feel brunchy. She spread a mat woven of reeds. There she served mint tea, wafers, truffles, and tarts. What's your favorite food, Willie, she asked. Oatmeal mush, said Willie. Federley got out his guitar and they sang for a spell. Rosebud sang a song which she made up herself and of which she was quite proud in her own shy way. Frogs sing and muskrats chortle, ducks quack quack and turtles snorkel. Come to Rosebud's stately wane, this day will never come again. Blow the man down, sang Willie. When the flotilla shoved off again, Rosebud's fore and aft rigged vessel came too. This time they steered south-southeast through the narrow passageway between the hill hocks, hillocks and hummocks of bulrushes and tool grass. Next port of call will be the Green Alder Mansions, home of Cork and Spinner, Federley announced. It's midday and time for a spree. The Green Alder Mansions is the best to sport, is the place to sport and frolic, and Cork and Spinner can sport and frolic like nobody's business. So ho for the briny deep. For scraping bottom, said Willie. Willie had never seen the like of two summer folk Cork and Spinner. And as for the Green Alder Mansions, well, there were trapezes and treehouses, climbing vines and bouncing nets. There was a swing that swung from the deep woods into the sunlight umpteen feet over the swamp. They climbed and they swung. They yodeled and whooped. Oh, what a lark. Oh, what a spree. Oh, lucky me. Oh, lucky we, Federley gasped. I stubbed my toe, said Willie. One more flotilla started out. Spinner came in his stern wheeler and Cork in his outrig outrigger. This time they ste steered due north for the dark, creepy part of the swamp where the willows stood with their feet in the water and tangled their snaky branches overhead. Next port of call will be the Far Willow Reaches, home of Twyla Lou, Federley announced. It's mid-afternoon and time for Lupper, which comes halfway between lunch and supper. It's also time for spinning yarns and telling tales. When it comes to telling tales, Twyla Lou can tell Lulu. Heave ho for the bounding mane. Watch out for that branch, said Willie. The new summer folk was heavy set. Her house, her furniture, her chair and baskets were all woven out of willow shoots. It was shady and cool in the far willow reaches. A waterly green light flickered through the branches overhead. 
It was a wee bit spooky, but Willie didn't let on. Willow makes good fishing poles, said Willie. Twyla Lou served Willie and the summer folk a lupper of deviled eggs, tie rack, and pickled pig's feet. After lupper, she told their fortunes with an old tattered deck of cards. Then she told them the story of the purple glob, which swallowed people up and grew bigger and bigger until... It's getting late, said Willie. So the flotilla started back and Twyla Lou's house barge came too. The sun was low in the west. This time they steered due south for Willie's Landing. Toodaloo, said Federley. Farewell to you, said Rosebud. Stay out of the rain till we meet again, said Cork and Spinner. Au revoir and many more, said Twyla Lou. And one by one, the summer folk slipped into the tool grass and disappeared with scarcely a rustle until Willie stood all alone in the tool grass. Willie felt a little empty and he felt a little sad, but he didn't let on. So long, said Willie. And he allowed that he might come out here and wait around for a spell next summer on the longest day of the year. That evening, as the sun went down, Willie and his dad, Joe Potts, sat in front of their shanty on the sand dune. The last of the summer folk were picking up their beach umbrellas and zooming away in their fast and fancy boats. Sand fleas, muttered Joe Potts, thick as sand fleas and twice as pesky. Willie squinted his eyes and looked way out where the sea met the sky. He thought back over things very carefully and scratched his head. I reckon, said Willie. I reckon there's summer folk and summer folk, said Willie Potts. And that's it. Have a great afternoon.